And now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio on this Flash Friday. Headlights on across North America. Ladies, if you see the headlights on, show us your cans. It's that simple. Wide open telephones on this Flash Friday at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. Dion on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Yeah. I found out that you give good financial advice recently. I thought you just kind of talked about women, but I found out there's a lot more to you. So thank you for that. The more money you have, the more... Wait, 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 wait. The more more money you have, the more chicks you get. Well, yeah, that goes together well. That's true. I'll be the first one to admit that. Right. (laughs) The looks thing goes out the window if you have money. So, I agree. Well, because that's because anybody looks looks better when they're covered in a pile of $100 bills. Exactly. Exactly. So, I saw these stories on IndyMac recently... And um, I feel. By the way, we should point out we should point out that Indy Mac is a bank based in Pasadena, California, and oh, I didn't it know is the. Here. Oh yes, and it is the uh, the latest uh, big bank failure. I believe it's the third biggest bank failure in American banking history. Wow. Okay, I'm only 20, and this is the first economic crisis I'm really seeing unfold before my eyes. And I'm seeing all these people saying, you know, I have more than $100,000 in the bank, and so I might only get half, I might lose it. But is that irresponsible of the of the customer to put more than $100,000 in a bank that the FDIC only insures $100,000 of the money? Or Well, keep in mind, here's how it works. Mm-hmm. The uh, FDIC insures up to $100,000 in an account and a total in a bank of up to $250,000. So okay. if you had $250,000, you'd want to have two accounts with 100000 and one with 50000 And that's it. If you had more money than that, and how many listers actually do, not many, uh, you'd want to put that in other banks in the same fashion. 100,000 in each account and the last 50,000 by itself in a separate account. So no matter what, even if you're a millionaire such, you should always do the $100,000 rule? Well, yes. I mean, why would you want to run the risk that your bank would go under like IndyBank? Exactly. Okay, I just was wondering. And also, I was watching the stories and they were saying, you know, right now that it is a time to invest. People are holding on to their money, but they don't know the opportunities out there. For someone who's middle class like myself, is it smart to put your money back into the system right now? Or you well, it, be, uh, you see, the person we're talking to on the radio, the average uh-huh. person like yourself who's 20 years old, um, uh-huh. the, this is an important time to get your financial house in order. Okay. And that means this is the time to make sure that you have paid all your bills, uh-huh. that your debts are as close to zero as possible. Mm-hmm. That you got six months of living expenses, that you are maxing out your IRA and your four hundred one k. Okay, so that's what I should be working on right now. That's right. If you're one of the rare individuals who, after doing all that, has money left over, call me back. But I'd be willing to bet you're not. Oh no, not at all. Not even close. Hope to be rich like you one day, Tom. Thank you very much. Well, the, and the way I did it, which by the way I learned by accident. I didn't learn it because I was particularly smart. Uh, that it was to first get your infrastructure, to get your basic foundation in order. Mm-hmm. You can't play investing like it's Las Vegas. 
Okay. I've got ten thousand dollars and I've got twenty thousand dollars in debt. So what I'm going to do is instead of paying the twenty thousand down when I as I can afford to pay it down, and use the ten thousand to pay the twenty thousand down halfway, I'm going to bet it all at the casino of Wall Street and see if I can make twenty thousand. So just pay off all the debt first. Right. Before you invest in anything or buy anything. Correct. Pay off everything. That's okay. right. And I also want to thank you. Um, my mom's been laid off, and so she couldn't pay her bills recently. And uh, for six years, she hasn't worked. And so she always said it was the system and this and that. And then I heard you talking about bankruptcy to some lady a couple Fridays ago. And you were telling them that, you know, you're irresponsible. It's your fault. And I had to realize that because I let some of my bills go last month. And I said, you know what, my next paycheck, all to my bills. Because that's true. I can't complain about the system. It's my fault. I need to pay my bills so that I'm and, here. And by the way, let me point something else out to you. Why is it important to pay your bills on time? Not only because it's immoral mm -hmm. to borrow money that you have no intention of paying back or you don't have the ability to pay back. But because every time you pay a bill late, your credit score goes down. And when your credit score goes down... The interest rate you will pay on car loans, mortgages, loans of other kinds, credit cards, goes up. You'll end up paying more down the line. Just because I didn't make a payment on time. I'll Correct. Much more for 10 they more are years directly so. connected. Okay. And by the way, that's also connected to your insurance. If you have car insurance mm -hmm. or any other kind of insurance, if you pay the bill late, they report that to the credit reporting agencies. Mm. And that so lowers your credit score. your driving record? Insurance companies also go by your credit? Yeah, they do. Wow. Okay, I didn't know that either. So you have an incentive to do it right. Yes. Absolutely. Bills are to be paid on time. All righty, Tom. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. I'll take care if of my If you business. can't, and by the way, if you can't afford to pay for something... Don't buy it. Exactly. I had to learn that the hard way. But I've taken care of everything now. All right, Tia. Okay, thank you. Thank Bye. you, darling. Appreciate the call. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. Let me say hello here to uh, Sean on the Tom Likas show. Hey, Tom. Hey. Hey, earlier you were saying that you're still paying off the mortgage on your house. Right. For someone who's made as much money as you have, why do you still have a mortgage on your house? Well, I'm going to tell you why. It was uh, I, I got uh, financial advice, and it's good advice, from my accountant, who recommended to me that uh, uh, at the interest rate I was able to borrow money, that after the tax deduction that I get for having those mortgages, um, the... All I would have to do in the stock market with that money is earn, let's say, a 3% return. Okay. And if I earn a 3% return, it would be a profit being made on, on that money over what it cost me to borrow it. Okay, I see. That, that's why. Okay. Now, now, having said that, you know I own two homes. Yes. And I what do. you may not know, because most people are not in this bracket... The government, and frankly, I think this is only fair. The government will allow you to have a mortgage on your first home and your vacation home and write off the interest, but only up to $1.1 million total. So okay. I had to pay down my two mortgages to get them below $1.1 million. Okay. And okay. now everything is totally deductible. I see. Okay. I have one more question for you. Yes. Okay, you're always telling guys not to get into relationships, but I think what you have to understand is that most guys who aren't like you, who aren't rich and famous, can't get can't get laid often. That's why they're in relationships. Well, they can. They don't believe they can uh, because okay. they don't have any game. Uh, the trick with women, which is what we teach in our class, like us 101, okay. is to convince women you either have more than you have or that you have the potential to earn more than you have. Okay. But it takes it takes a lot more than that to get laid these days. No, it I mean, really doesn't. Okay. Okay. Especially, I mean, by the way, especially in a recession. <laughs> your chances of getting laid improve. If, if you tell a woman that you're going to be a lawyer next year, 
and and people are in danger of losing their jobs. You your your odds are better now. Okay. Well, <laughs> the thing is, I I actually will be a lawyer next year, but I still think that that doesn't make a huge difference. It I, does. I that, are you using I, it to get laid? Not not really. I mean, well, I, you ought to be. You'll find out how effective it is. Oh, okay. Well. I don't know. It just seems like you. Tell well, if you haven't time. done it, how would you know? Uh, you know, I mean, it does come up in conversation, but like I said, like I know a lot of girls who don't date guys who are successful. They're dating guys who are working at bars or working at clubs. Well, there whatever. are women like. You know, the fact is, no method is one hundred percent effective. Uh, picking up chicks involves rejection. Okay. My goal is to increase the success rate, but you're never going to increase to 100% ever. Okay. 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 Well, I guess that answers my questions. I, I just I just assume you think everyone has it as easy as you do, but not everyone's as rich and famous as you not are. Many so women who meet me, died. many women who meet me do not know what I do for a living. Okay. And in fact, I don't advertise it. Okay, well, where, where are you meeting these people? Just I in mean, my everyday life. <laughs> in your everyday life? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like at the radio station? Or? No, I don't work at the radio station. I work in my own studio. Okay. No, I go out to dinner. I go out, I'm at bars, at, 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 at uh, restaurants. I'm at, uh, I go to wine dinners, which don't cost that much to go to. Okay. Where the wines are paired with the foods, and, and, and you're so you're saying that the main reason all these girls are getting with you is because you tell them that you have a lot of money. Is that they? I don't even have to tell them if I'm at a wine dinner. They assume I have a lot of money. Okay. okay. I mean, I would recommend wine dinners as a great way to meet chicks. They assume you're upscale because you're there. Okay. Can you tell me a little bit more about this? Because most yeah, many of the age, in Los Angeles, well, they, they should learn about that because in Los Angeles, and I, I can't speak for Orange County where you are, but I'll bet it's the same at, uh, you know, the uh, Ritz Carlton uh, and, and what have you. But uh, I do know that in Los Angeles at the Hotel Bel Air, at the Beverly Hills Hotel Polo Lounge, what have you, uh, they have an awful lot of dinners. Uh, in the uh, very, very nice restaurants there at a very low price. When I say a low price, I mean compared to what you would expect to pay to go to a really nice restaurant. Okay. Uh, and it's a five-course meal paired with wines, and many of the people who go are unattached women looking to meet guys, guys of means. Okay. But and they assume if you are there that you are a guy of means. Okay. Okay. Well, the problem with that idea is that most of those females are probably a lot older than I am. It doesn't matter. Are you looking to get laid or are you looking to get married? <laughs> I am not looking for anything. I just, you know, I don't know. You don't want to like, get laid? No, I do. I do want to get laid. But You think these like, women won't have sex with you? No, I don't because I'm 10, 5, 10, 15 years younger than most of the ladies. Sean, have you heard about cougars? Have you heard about MILFs? Have you heard about this phenomenon? Yes, I have. Well, this is a good way and, to find them. Yeah, and most and most of those ladies end up with a guy who is, you know, 6, 5, you know. Who You're looks like, wrong. Uh, they okay. end up with guys. They end up with guys who are younger, and they aren't necessarily six five. You know, you haven't done any of this stuff. You haven't been rejected yet. You're already assuming defeat. Okay. You're, okay. You're, you have to try and be rejected before you can make these comments. Okay. No, you're right. I'll, I'll give it a try. <laughs> you, 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 you've given up before you've even gone in. Tom like it. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. It's the Tom Like It Show at one eight hundred five eight hundred Tom Flash Friday. Wide open telephones. Gwen on the Tom Like It Show. Hello. Hello. Is that a question or a statement? Oh, I wasn't sure if you said my name or not. Um, hi. I've, well, I've got a question about the women thing because I'm, I'm confused. I feel like you're kind of flip-flopping. Do you want, should women be working or should women be at home ironing pants? Um, well, put it this way. 
men should not get married. Okay. If a man is married or is getting married, despite my best attempts to get him not to do that, Uh she should be home ironing his pants. Okay, so she should be home ironing the pants, which I agree, personally. Um, uh, And I'm just saying, like, like, the guys that call up and they whine about, like, oh, these women, all they want is money, they just want your money, I'm sick of it, man. Well, don't you teach them in your little rules, like, how to get laid is, like, Pretend you have money, act like you have money. I didn't money. tell them. I didn't tell them to uh, get married to these women. I told them to right. get laid. You have to look like you've got potential or look like you've got money. So mislead the women is what you're saying. Yes. Yeah. Just like okay, just like women dye their hair to mislead us, lie about their age to mislead us, no, say they're they on the they pill to mislead us. To look good. Darling, they, guys do stuff to themselves to look good. Again, it's, it's not but about it's leading. Sure, it is. How many women dye their hair and then say they're five years younger than they are? Well, I don't do that. I mean, I get my hair colored. This, but this I is not the Gwen show. I'm talking about women in general. Okay, because um, I'm. I think I'm. I should be exempt as, like that. Other There's no exempting. Now. Okay, come on. This is like now. I have all the women want to get exempted. They want me to rate them. I mean, come on. No, I don't want you to rate me. I just want to say that um, I don't know. I just think that there's a con, you know, a contradiction there, and I. I and there's I, no I contradiction struggle. there. Again, uh, if you didn't understand what I said, I'll have to repeat it. I'm not telling men to get married and lie about how much they make. I'm telling them to lie about how much they make or lie about their potential to get laid. After they get what they want, they should kick these women through the uprights and move on to the next victim. Right, but these guys are still complaining. I mean, these are the twenty-year-olds, the ones that aren't married. They're, they're the ones who that- haven't. They're the ones who who are afraid of rejection, who haven't even tried. Like these guys you're hearing, who have not even tried what I'm suggesting. Well, I don't know. Maybe they think, should think about maybe developing a personality or something. No, of- no, like- you don't need a personality. You just need game. You just need game. That's right. Okay. Well, I think it's funny. I chuckled. I, I laughed so hard when you started talking about morals uh, when it came to money. <laughs> and I'm just like, well, so yes. I've been married four times and <laughs> just, you know. What does that have to do with, wait, 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 wait. What does that have to do, wait, 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 wait. What does that have to do with being immoral? You, no, you, t- you you bringing up the word morals. I just laughed out loud because that was yes. so funny. Because you're the most immoral person I know on the radio. In what way? What? In what way? In what way? Because you talk about how you just lay, just get laid. That's all it's all about. Just get laid. What's immoral about laid. that? What's immoral about that? And what's immoral is that it's just it's devaluizing of yourself and of women. No, darling, and, you, you think know, women should get paid to get laid. That's what you think, no, and you think that I men think should be so paying all. their fair share. No, I don't think women should. Are you saying women should get paid to get laid? I think that's what you're saying. No. No, no, no. You're no, upset no. because I tell men no, you can get laid and you don't have to level. pay. I don't think people should be play, play playing. People are not on the level. Women saying. lie about being on birth control. They lie about having or not having boyfriends and husbands. They lie about their... And uh, men do the they same wear, thing. They men wear wonder about... bras. That's my point. It's war out there. And so you yes. use whatever weapons you have in your arsenal. Oh, my God. Do you have children, Tom? Nope. Oh, thank God. Thank God. No. But I say, people always ask me if I have a daughter. I say no. I usually have somebody else's daughter. You what? I said I don't have a daughter. I usually have somebody else's daughter. Oh, jeez. Oh, my God. You're unbelievable. It's true. I'm telling the truth. And that's the I know thing. it's I, true. I mean, how old are you, if you don't mind me asking? I'm 51. Oh, my God. That's gross. And you're, like, doing 20-year-olds? If they if they want it, I give it to them. Because it makes you feel like a stud, huh? No, darling, it has nothing to do with feeling like a stud. Yeah, it I, does. Oh, no, I'm gonna, to, darling, it. if you want to know the You're reason, cool. I'm going to tell you the reason. Yeah, I, I will tell you the reason, and I will be completely upfront like I am about everything else. Good. The well, reason a man, and it's not just me, it's uh, just about every man out there, including any man you're currently dating or married to. The reason men want to be with 20-year-olds is not because they feel like a stud. The reason men want to be with 20-year-olds is because when you see a 20-year-old naked, you don't need Viagra or other pills. 
results. The reason men need Viagra and Cialis is because they have 50-something wives with rolls of fat that sweat and they have to look at them naked and they've got stretch marks and all of this stuff. And and 20-year-olds don't have that. I don't, you know, I go to the gym and I see a lot of women in the sauna and they're 40 year olds that look damn good. Yeah, and guess what? They look damn good after their husbands have left them when they wouldn't lose the weight and they wouldn't go to the gym way back then. Well, you know, I mean, there's always going to be. I go to the gym too, darling, and the women who are at the gym are rarely married. They are usually divorced or separated or just broke up with their boyfriend, but rarely are they in a current relationship. Right, right. And well, that's I mean, because think- that's because women do not want to be in shape. That is something they feel they have to do to attract a man. And once the man has been attracted, there is no longer any need to keep it up. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the trick is, so the trick is, if you want to be, the trick is, if you want to be with hot chicks, never commit to one. Because when you are committed, they get flabby and they cut their hair short and they go, we just had sex a week ago. (laughs) And also, if they're hot, what's the chances that they're going to be committed to you, right? Who cares? Well, some of the guys care. I mean, I know you don't care. And I preach that they should not care. I don't care. I know you don't care. That's what I... <laughs> and they oh, were wow. on the air. No, they didn't. Not yes. a yeah. I darling. broadcasting. It's like... No, darling. Seconds. Darling, you haven't worked in broadcasting since... Now. No, you oh. haven't. You have not worked in the broadcast... Boy, another broad who can't shut up. You haven't worked in this business since the Janet Jackson days, darling. We were in a 70-second delay right now. Do you know that? 70. <laughs> You're an oh, idiot. You're an I idiot. We are in a 70... 70 seconds. Do you know that? Okay, 70 seconds. Oh, That's right. God, so baby. when you curse, we have to cut the last 70 seconds of everything you said. I'm so sorry it came out, Tom. <sighs> Oh, I'm that's what sorry. you get bleepers for. And boy, that's a, uh, I can see Why you're a broadcast you professional. I can to... see you are a broadcast professional. Bleepers. Is that what you call them at your station? Bleepers? Pardon me? Never mind. I've had enough for Christ's sake. Tom Like It. Like It. 1 800 5800 Tom Like It. Yeah, Flash Friday, the Tom Like It show. Headlights on, man. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Brett Farr. You know, I am not sorry that I call that pussy out. Can you believe he's come, you know, like, talking about coming back again? Asking the Packers to release him? Remember that press conference? I took a lot of crap. I took a lot of crap because I attacked uh, Brett Favre for being a drama queen. This is what it sounded like, folks. I promised I wouldn't get emotional. I'd like to thank the, the Packers for giving me an opportunity as well. I hope that every penny I hope that every penny that they've spent on me, they know it was money well spent. I, uh, it was never about the money or fame or the records. And I hear people talk about your accomplishments and things that It was never my accomplishments. It was our accomplishments. The teammates that I played with, and I can name so many. It was never about me. It was about everybody else. I'm honored. Please. Really. Um. Yeah, I am honored. I hope everyone knows how 
special this is. And I truly appreciate the opportunity. <laughs> and as they say, all good things must come come to an end. Jesus. Outrageous. Drama queen, Brett Favre. All that weeping. And now he wants to go back again. Yeah, I'm glad I stood up to you morons and called in and defended him because uh, the real Brett Favre, drama queen. Drama queen. Stop with the goddamn retirement press conferences. You want to play to your 80? Go right ahead. Stop with the weepy press conferences. Stop it. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Chris on the Tom like his show. Hello. Wah, I'm a little baby, Brett Favre. Uh, Brett yeah. Favre, Tom. Oh, Jesus. Tom, I want to tell you what I want to hear on the show, and if you actually want to hear what I don't want to hear on the show. Yeah, tell me. Two, two big items. Uh, first one is I want to hear more detailed information about your day-to-day routine, where you go, where you eat, what you drink. I know a lot about what you drink. Just a relaxed discussion about that stuff. It, it's really good to listen to. Okay. And the second item on that first part of the list was when when you're doing an interview well, anybody from an average guy on the street all the way to the real real famous people whoever you're interviewing over the phone or in person ask them really detailed information about their lives mundane details you can find a lot of a lot of humor a lot of intrigue and a lot of interest but most, most importantly you'll find a lot of a lot of humor in that stuff all right so you want more detail on my life and everybody else's basically i mean that's what we. That's what radio is great for. It's like uh, you're a voyeur, but nobody knows it. Now, did you have any specific questions for me? Uh, specific questions for you? Because um, I'll I'll give you details. Just tell me what you want to know. I know, but of course, it's just the Murphy's Law. I'm not going to remember. What okay. I want to know about you. When you I'm can always you. call me back, and I'll be happy to answer your questions. I know where to find you, Tom. I've always wanted to say one thing. Please, Tom, take me out tribal style. All right, Chris. Here you go. Sonia on the Tom Likas show on Flash Friday. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. Uh, hey. <laughs> I'm a very loyal listener. I just moved here from New York, actually. And Eleven seconds. I love <laughs> I know how much you love New Yorkers. But, it only um, took 11 seconds. <laughs> I didn't call about New York. I actually called about Brett Favre, because I'm from Wisconsin originally, and I've always thought he was a bump a bump. I don't want to say it, because I don't want to get bleeped in 70 seconds, whatever. But, I mean... I, honestly, I think it was time for him to retire anyway, and every Wisconsin person was pushing for it anyway, and that's why he had to retire in the first place. And he's a mess, and and he was just upset because everybody in the everybody in Wisconsin was telling him it's time for him to retire because he wasn't doing what we wanted him to do, which was win a Super Bowl. That's right. Well, now and he's that, decided he wants to keep playing until he wins a Super Bowl. And that, Even if and that's another right. 50 years, he'll keep playing. Exactly, and you know what? And the whole thing is, is why he's going back is because he wants to win a Super Bowl. Hopes, but Packers got sick of him. They want somebody new, and and he had to quit because of that. And that's the whole reason why. Because I mean, every time like football, that's all Wisconsin talks about. Because all Wisconsin has, like you know, football, cheese, and beer. So it's like that's all they will sit down and say and do. And they pushed him out, and he knew that, so he knew he had to retire. And now he's trying to get out of his contract, and supposedly. I mean, I'm not sure. I don't know if you know more about this, but I guess he's still kind of bound with the Packers in some way. Well, I mean, I mean they they have the rights to him. Okay, see, and he's asking to be released, right? Like, he, right. he wants to be released. And so, you know, and I think he, he knew that when he was retiring, and now he's trying to get, you know, play the sympathy. I really want to play, and please someone hire me, and I really want to do this. But hopefully the Packers will let me go. I don't really still need to play for the Packers. They need to play for somebody else. I nice. just think it's dumb. Oh, I, I, I totally agree with you, son. <laughs> I do. Uh, I'm glad you agree with me. Um, well, that's all I wanted. By the way, speaking of Wisconsin, you know, you are what you eat. And is that why so many people in Wisconsin look like human bratwurst? 
<laughs> it's true. We're like the poster people for like the fat people that you see <laughs> on like fat America. <laughs> They don't even need to get like Getty images from. We just go. They just go outside and go like to to like the local McDonald's and just take pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever they do, like obese America, fat America. It's like, gosh, that's my neighbor Diane. Mm. I guess some of these people look like they've been steamed in beer. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I'm telling you that. I well, yeah. I mean, that's why I had to leave. So, you know, I have to keep it thin. I, I, I actually, you know, it kind of sucks because it made me look really skinny out, you know, over there. You know, I look like a twig. And now nah, I kind of, you know, I'm just average. So that kind of sucks, you know. Oh, uh, see that? You were a beauty queen in Wisconsin. I was. A, I was, I was a beauty, but I'll tell you one thing, and this is for you. Like, so if you want women with big breasts, hands down, Wisconsin. I really? showed my ex-boyfriend my prom picture from Wisconsin, all of us. C's. Minimum. Minimum. Really? Minimum. In high school. High school. Oh, my. Minimum. We all, oh, yeah. All of us. I, I had a small cup. I was, I'm a C. I had a small cup. And these girls were like double D's at like 16. Really? This, this is where the Z cup comes in. <laughs> I had, I had a, a, um, a gospel teacher who actually had like a, I didn't even know they made like an M cup. M natural. cup. This is natural too. No natural. wonder they, now you see, I, now I know why they call it the dairy state. I thought it was something else. <laughs> That's right. That's exactly what he said. <laughs> We have lots of milk, and we drink, and we all drink it. So, yes, yeah, so, man, if you're ever in Wisconsin, your boob guy, I'm telling you, use the Lycus 101 tips. Oh, get you boy. Some, some big boobs. I love it. That's a nice beer. Time to go back to Wisconsin. <laughs> there you go, man. There you go. Nice. All right, I need to be taken out tribal style. All right, Sonia, here you go. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. It's Steve on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, what's going on, Tom? Not much, Steve. I've uh, been a listener for about four years. You and Russ Martin take up uh, about six hours of my day every day. That's all we ask. The uh, I've never heard you in my listening life. I've never heard you where I could disagree with you, except maybe Brett Favre. Man, I think uh, I think he's pretty close to being one of the toughest men to ever wear a uniform in any sport. I'm not saying he's anywhere near the top greatest quarterback, not even in the top ten. And I can't stand people that want to put him as the greatest. He's he's got no business being mentioned with Elway, Marino, Montana, even Aikman. But the man is tough, and he did have a wuss moment, but. Hell, we've all had them. But if he's so tough, why is it now two years in a row he had one of these weepy retirement press conferences? That that's the worst moment I'm talking about. But two of them. The stuff he's the injuries, man. That that streak just play day in day out practice the conditioning to be his age and no rumors of steroids like Roger. But Clinton. maybe I'm now, maybe now. now he's there. Maybe after all of that, he's losing his mind. You may be right, but until we know, we've got to give him some credit for that streak, man. Well, I, 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 I understand, but, that, but again, you know, we're not talking about the streak. He had a good career in the NFL, a good career, but right. now, why? look, if he wants to keep playing until he's 60, that's fine with me. George Blanda practically did that years ago, yeah. but if he wants to keep playing, why does he have to keep having press conferences and retiring? I'll agree with that. I will agree. As far as on field, I cannot question his toughness. Off the field, he's a puppy dog. Uh, what what everybody likes about him, and me excluded, is the wearing the Wranglers, the T-shirts. You know, it looked like he hadn't shaved in three days. Just being an every man's man, overcoming addictions, the streak, when so many people are... Overcoming addictions, him, Rush Limbaugh, all those guys who overcame addictions, or did they? The Tom Likas Show.